Hey, what's up? This is Sifu Cuddle, and in this video, we're going to be talking about spinning the butterfly knives. Now, spinning techniques are often seen as just flashy techniques, but really there are training applications to this. The movements derive from actual striking techniques, and then they turn into a continuous motion, which develops the grip strength, the forearm strength, and then flexibility within the wrist, the elbow, and the shoulder. If you practice these spinning movements for long durations, you're going to find that it actually does wear down your body. You will start to feel fatigued, and over time, and consistent practice, you will build muscle. So this is an important part of the training, but don't get a misconception like you're just going to stand in front of somebody, spin the weapons, and cut them up like you see in the movies, or even worse, block bullets. Okay, so there's two types of spins that we're going to do in, within the upward spinning technique. And as far as butterfly knives go, I'm not a big fan of doing spinning for demonstrations because it's just not very long of a weapon, so it doesn't show as well as something like if you have double sticks or double broadswords. But it's still a part of our forms, and it's still important to practice in your training. So grab your knives, and let's go get to work. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, this is derived from striking. So let's focus on the strikes first. Take your hands, grab the butterfly knives in the regular position. We're not going to do any reverse position for this. Now, the strike itself is a diagonal upward strike, and this is going to be symmetrical. So we are going to start just with a single blade, and we're going to slice up and across, and then slice up and across. So these are your slices. I'm going from my left side to my right side, and then I'm going to drop it down and go from my right side to my left side. Notice when I finish this up, the blade edge is pointing up, and the tip of the sword is still pointing towards my opponent. So that's the idea, so that I'm slicing forward here. Practice this individually. Think about just the, the main goal is to go from one side of your body to the other side. So it crosses, it crosses the center line, but then we're also slicing upward here. So if you keep that in mind, you'll have a much better chance of picking this one up. Now, I want, to, I want you to try to practice just getting used to making it nice and fluid with one hand, and then you can practice working with the other hand because this, is, this does rely on both hands being very natural to do this, okay? So you have to be super comfortable. Now, the next thing we're going to do is tighten it up a little bit, turn it into more of a flowering motion, but we'll do this by a combination. So this is still considered application. Drop the hands back, now same thing, I'm going to cross the body and slice with both, okay? So if my hands start down towards the left, I slice up with the right, up with the left, and then now, after I'm done with this slice, I'm going to bring my hands down and back in a circular motion, and then I'm going to slice up with the left, and then with the right. So in this position is very symmetrical. Each time I turn, the blade is going to cut, the other one's going to follow. I lead with my left and then right, and then when I switch sides, I lead with my right and then left. So when you're working on this one, you can think of whatever hand is the closest is going to initiate the slice. So now my left hand is closer to my opponent. I slice up with the left first. Now that the both are done, my right hand is closer to the opponent, so I slice up with my right hand first. When we tighten this up and turn it into a flower, it becomes asymmetrical. Now, what I mean by this is we're going to lead only with the left hand each time. So we have to do a crossing motion. We have to cross the right hand over the left, and then the left hand is going to lead. So a good way to get comfortable with this, if you have not already done it, is just cross your right hand over your left, and then practice doing that upward spin with your left hand. It's going to feel awkward at first, especially on the return, but this is really key to get comfortable with. You want to make this a natural, comfortable position. Okay, now from here, what we're going to do is cross the right hand over the left, and then notice I turn the blades down, tips pointing down, and then the direction of the blade edge is forward. I lead with the left. This is going to feel awkward. Get comfortable, okay? Get used to this. We're going to lead with the left, and then follow with the right. 
Now I can bring my right arm all the way back, drop the left hand down, and then we do the same thing we did before, left and then right. Okay, so again, same angle. I've crossed my hands, left and then right. Drop the hands back, left and then right. Okay, now if I'm facing this way, I still cross my hands on the left, left hand, right hand, bring it back, left hand, right hand. Cross, left hand, right hand, open, left hand, right hand. Cross, left hand, right hand, open, left hand, right hand. It's fine to practice trying it with the other side. So now we have the right hand underneath, that's fine. But most times you'll find in most forms that it's going to be predominantly the left hand underneath as you do this, okay? Now, the next thing to do is just like I did, you wanna tighten this up, okay? So from here, when we tighten it up, notice my, my right hand is not making contact to the left, but it stays over the left hand the whole time. This kind of flowering motion is nice because it has a continuous rhythm going forward and it's pretty equal for the circle for each blade. The only thing is it's not as impressive as like a nice big long broadsword or a longer uh, like stick, like an escrima stick or you know some double cudgels. So it doesn't look as <laughs> impressive when people do this with, with butterfly knives. However, you can open it up in your asymmetrical spin, um, similar to like how we did it in the beginning, and this can look a little bit more impressive for demonstration. So it's really up to your personal preference. So again, I cross here. This is going to be the same thing. I still cross my arms, but then I wanna have a big open swing when I come back. So if you open up the arms, as you do this, it's the exact same thing we've done before. It's just that it's going to tighten up as you uh, cross the hand here and then have a nice big circle coming back. So the rhythm is now asymmetrical as well. So instead of having a consistent one, two, one, two, one, two, we have a one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. But it makes it really nice when we have this kind of quick motion right here. So you have that option as well. When we want to make it symmetrical, we have to add a little bit extra work. And this is way more advanced than those two because those two are the same motion, just done with arms more open or closer together. So this, this uh, symmetrical version, we have to cross left hand under right, open up, slice up again, and then right hand under left. So our leading blade switches each time. That's another option that you can do for this, but it's honestly not that necessary. This motion itself is enough to have the uh, flowering motion. And again, if you really did want to cross, you get this one, two, three, open, one, two, three, open, one, two, three. So you get those moments of the quick in between the slow. So that happens as well. Now I do have an honorable mention here, and that is this simultaneous um, double upward flower. So it sounds more complicated than it is. It's actually just this motion. And what we're going to do is just bring both up at the same time. I have seen some people try to do this um, with both in front like that, but more often than not, you don't have enough space between the arms for that flexibility that you need for this part. So it's a little awkward there. Typically what people will do is just bring them up and cross. So we have up and then cross here. So they both scoop up at the same time and then they're going to scoop up at the same time. So really this is easy. It's not that difficult to do. The main thing is again, getting one hand to commit to going underneath. So again, I always put my left hand underneath for both of these. But the main thing you have to do to make this work is a little more scoop, okay? And then make sure to pull the hands out to the outside. They're not going to be exactly level. One's gonna be a little bit higher than the other. So you, there you go. Four different ways of spinning the butterfly knives, but make sure you start here, or at least with the open one, because those are gonna be the two main ones you need.
Okay, so there you have it. Now, as far as the asymmetrical spin goes, I think it's a lot better for demonstration because it's a lot more open of the movements and it's got that quick flip in the um, shorter part of the spin. However, it still looks a little bit uneven, so it really depends on what you think looks better for your aesthetics. Uh, traditionally in Choi Le Fat, we just do the tighter spin and it's not very often done. It's just a quick thing that you do at the end of one of the forms. All right, so if you have any questions, drop a comment down below. As always, hit that like button and make sure to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. This is Sifu Cuddle. I'll see you next time. Bye.